as it goes, I've seen London, I've seen France, I've seen my golden underpants. However, maybe I won't be seeing my golden underpants, because gold is heavy, and if I want to see London and France, I have to pack light, right? That is not getting through airport security without questions. So as a lot of you guys know, I have a feeding tube. So travel to and from via the airspace is actually quite difficult when you have to manage a baggage kilo limit and a whole bunch of medical supplies. In this video, I'm going to give you five tips that I have tried personally in my own travels of how to get around the whole baggage issue when you have a condition and you're flying with a company that doesn't support medical bags. Yes, you heard me correctly. Not all companies let you bring in a medical bag. Before we get into the video, if you're new here, hi, my name is Amity Gilmore and I post a whole bunch of different videos, mainly vlogs based all around living life to the fullest with illness, not despite it. So if any of what I've just said interests you, don't forget to click the subscribe button or follow me over my Instagram at Amity Gilmore. Let's get into the video. Recently, I accidentally booked a flight that I didn't mean to book. And I know that sounds crazy. No, I was not drunk. And I know what you're thinking. Amity, how could you possibly not have been drunk when doing something like that? First of all, I don't drink. So that's out of the picture. Secondly, I was meant to book a flight. I just wasn't meant to book that flight. You know, it was the wrong day, the wrong month and the wrong location because I was not thinking straight and I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Do I blame it on stress? Do I blame it on the fact that I'm just not in the head there sometimes? I don't know. I don't know. Now I live in Australia and I flew with like a smaller flying company and what I found was they didn't actually supply medical bags, like free carry-on medical bags. They didn't supply that. That's kind of annoying, but it is what it is and you can't really do anything about it, unfortunately. So I had to think smart on how I was going to fit all of my medical equipment and get to where I needed to be. So let's start off with tip number one, and that is to share weight distribution. Okay, I know that sounds confusing, but let me explain. With a lot of flight companies in Australia, you are allowed a certain kilogram of baggage and a certain kilogram of carry-on. What I just want to say is make sure that you distribute that weight equally. Do not pack in both those bags and sort which goes into which bag based on, I don't know, convenience or what goes with what. You need to think smart and you need to, with your carry-on luggage, you need to pack things you wouldn't normally pack into your carry-on luggage so that both are either maxed out or they're under the limit. Now this can be really annoying when you have to carry around extra carry-on, I get it, but it is something that is important. Obviously you're not going to do a 50-50 because you can only carry so much of your carry-on on, but it helps to distribute the weight and I don't know, maybe your golden underpants aren't going to fit into your suitcase so you will have to put them onto your carry-on because your carry-on has less so you can fit your golden underpants there and you can fit everything else in the suitcase. That was silly, why did I say that? Anyway. Tip number two is to buy there. And by that I mean are there things that you're packing that you can actually get easy and readily available to you at the location you're flying to. This also includes things you use for your medical whatever. Obviously a lot of medical things aren't necessarily something you can find easily, but if it's something like cotton buds for cleaning your stoma area, maybe you don't need to pack that and you can buy it there. This also includes food, not enteral feed, but like oral snacks, although I'm pretty sure you can't pack food anyway. Hygiene products. I mean, it could even include clothes if you're willing to buy maybe Maybe a spare pair of clothes down there. I don't know. That's depending on your budget and whether you can afford it. 
But if you are thinking about, you know, going for a shopping spree and buying some clothes, maybe that's something to think about. Depending on how desperate you are depends on what you can leave at home and buy elsewhere, but there are other things you can buy that aren't that expensive. You can even buy electronical things that aren't expensive. By that I mean chargers and earphones. That being said, that doesn't include AirPods because we all know you're not gonna buy another set of airpods when you're down there unless you want to then that's okay but uh i definitely don't have that in my budget by only packing the things you know 100 percent sure you will not be able to get in the place that you're going to then it is good to leave those things at home be able to buy them elsewhere i'm sorry my dog is going crazy benji benji He doesn't listen. He's like a child. Okay, so the third tip is something that I wasn't sure if it was gonna work or not, but I did try and yes, it did work, which is great. And that is to bring a feeding tube backpack and a carry-on luggage. Now, just to be sure, in that backpack, you can only put things in there that are solely related to tube feeding. I don't even think you can put in other medical supplies there, but if you put in like a syringe or like a one spare giving set or maybe a few spare giving sets, your feeds and your feeding pump, then you should be good with that because what I said was I said this here this is basically just attached to me this is just carrying all my life support which chew feeding is a form of life support in Australia that's what they call it so if you just tell them that specific thing then they will let you go through with it because they understand and then they'll let you also have an extra carry-on to go on because your feeding tube backpack will not be counted as a carry-on because it's something that's attached to you just to let you know so you don't stress out in advance that means they will not let you go and walk through the door thingy they will have to pat you down and to use one of those like wipe down detector things but this is only because they're not able to x-ray you so they'll have to do it an alternate route that way because we still need to keep people on the plane safe and you may be a lovely lovely person but they don't know you and they just need to make sure that everyone's safe so okay so the fourth is basically just ring ahead ring the air flight company and ask them a few questions if you want to be super sure and i found this very helpful i rang and found out that unfortunately i can't bring a medical backpack which again it wasn't really something i wanted to hear but i worked around it and that was good so ringing ahead is definitely important if you're going to be bringing extra stuff and you need more assistance so that is yeah that's just a must i uh, i don't think you can actually go in and be prepared when you have all this medical equipment if you haven't actually rang ahead the last trick i have is a trick for anything and it's to utilize pockets yes utilize pockets and layers of clothing and on top of this, I would also say by utilizing wearing layers of clothing and utilizing your pockets, you also need to utilize your feeding tube backpack and have it on. It doesn't need to be running while you go through it. Just go through with it on. It is so much easier. You get less questions. You don't have to have the pump actually on as long as it's connected and you're walking through with it. It just is a hundred million times easier. So those were my five tips on how to utilize your baggage when you are flying with an air company that doesn't allow a free medical bag. Do you have any tips that I haven't shared that you guys found helpful? Let me know in the comments down below. If you liked this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. And if you liked it even more, don't forget to click that subscribe button. You can also follow my Instagram at Amity Gilmore. Love you guys. God bless.